Hey everyone, I'm back with a, uh, well, I was going to say a quick little video, but I don't know that this one's going to be super quick. However, um, this is very intriguing. Um, I believe I might be the world's first person um, to actually extract the hex code from a Ford Think and successfully transfer it to a new microprocessor. Um, that's huge because those of you out there that have um, chips that might be bur burnt up, um, it's now possible to get a replacement micro and put it in here. Typically, um, what you're going to see on a um, Ford thing that has a fried micro is every single icon will be on the main um, display here. Um, so it will, I'll pause the video, but it will look like when you first connect it, if I can get everything hooked up right here quickly for you. Um, if you have a fried micro, <clears throat> it's going to look like this. Actually, it will even have the other icons. It'll show stuff down here. It'll show every single icon on the screen. If you're seeing that, I'll try to find an image online uh, and put it here. But if you're seeing that, um, chances are the microcontroller on here is fried. Um, so what I was able to do, um, you can actually see it. This is the micro that was in there that was bad. And uh, I used my hot air soldering station and I took that chip off and replaced it with a brand new one that I just uh, bought from DigiKey. And if you're curious, uh, this is what that looks like. sure you know you can see all the solder joints everything looks good um, and this is a board someone else tried to repair prior so if you see some components that look like they got a little hot that's what that's from um, so got the new chip on um, and then was actually able to get it programmed with uh, this pit kit 3 this is a microchip uh, programmer you need this ICSP um, converter cable. That's what this port is here on the phone. I'm not on the phone, that is a phone jack, but uh, here on the cluster, it uses a uh, kind of like a modified ethernet phone RJ45 type thing. Um, and that is the, the interface that um, can connect to the chip when it's on the board. So um, I'm gonna switch over now to my laptop screen share and show you what I did and how to program um, the microcontroller. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your pick kit is plugged into USB. Excuse me, USB. Um, we'll, we're not plugged into any power. Um, we're gonna use the pick kit for power. So just plug this in here. You should see your power and your active icons on. And then let's switch over to the computer and see what we can see. So what you're gonna wanna do is download the Microchip MP Lab IPE. Um, this is part of the MP Lab IDE, uh, which is gonna be um, something that you can find on Microchip's official site. I'll link to it uh, in the description, but um, the IPE is what you're gonna want um, that will let you flash the hex file. So let's open that up really quickly and you can see my Sentry files on here for programming the controller. The, all of these files right here are reverse engineering things. This is my Ford Think laptop at this point. So uh, let's let this open up. It is a 
pretty chunky little program suite, the IDE being much bigger than this even. Um, on this little not super powerful laptop, it does take just a minute. So once this appears, the first thing that you're going to want to do, sorry this is taking a little longer than I expected, um, alright so the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to be in advanced mode. Um, so if you click this, you'll get a little prompt that tells you to enter the, the password microchip, that's the default password, and once you do, you'll get these options over here on the side. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do, go to the power tab, you're going to want to power the target circuit from the pit kit, and it's a 5 volt, um, it's a 5 volt um, microcontroller. So now that that's done, go back here. You're going to want the device to be a PIC-16 F877. Um, this is with the new chip on the board. So once the new chip is soldered on the board, um, you'll be ready to go. Um, it sees my PIC kit here, so I'm going to click Connect. It's thinking... So it's just warning you that if you have a 3.3 volt device and you send it 5 volts, you can fry it. So click OK. And boom, it sees a PIC-16-877. Um, so what we're going to want to do is browse for the hex file. And I will have a link to this. Um, you'll see it in the description. But this is the hex file that I extracted from another working card. So we're going to open this file. This might take just a second. So loaded successfully, and you're going to click program. So you can see right now it's programming. This does take just a little while. Perfect. So programming is complete. It says programming and verification is actually complete, so that's great. But just to be sure, we're going to click this verify tab, and this will uh, verify all of the program memory, and you can see that verification is successful. So that's awesome. I'm going to switch back over now to um, my camera and show you next steps for um, continuing to debug. All right, so we just finished programming and verification. We're gonna unhook our programmer and we can slide that out of the way. I'm gonna actually move my whole computer off screen here. Um, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do now is you're gonna wanna verify. So I have um, a little 72 volt power supply back there. You're gonna want something that can output close to 72 volts to do this. Um, this is, you know, this is a little more advanced than basic repair. You're gonna have to solder a QFP package and then have a 72 volt bench power supply um, and kind of understand electronics a little bit. But um, I'm hoping this helps somebody out there. So um, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do, this first pin over here, Typically, you look at the face pins. So, um, on the if you're looking at the schematic, um, this is pin one. It goes through pin ten, and then um, pin eleven through twenty. So, left or right, just like a book. So, if this is pin one, when we plug it in, that's pin one. So, pin one is is positive, and pin fourteen right here is uh, negative. So, seventy two volts on pin one and I mean just using these little DuPont connectors they fit on here pretty
pretty well actually. And you might get a little pop, um, pin 14. And we heard a relay click. I don't know if you heard that on camera, but one of the relays clicked, which is a good sign. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab one of my little screens and uh, I'm gonna pop that in. And this is a really good sign. And then that, that relay that you just heard click, that is uh, something that tests um, the ground isolation, I think like every 30 seconds or so. So you'll hear a random relay click every 30 seconds or so. I'm going to um, have this little ballpoint pen that I'm gonna slide back here so the screen doesn't touch the, the PCB behind it. So we have the screen on, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And I have my key switch right over here. And uh, let's just switch it to whatever. So perfect. Um, it seems to be turf, that's drive. We get the seatbelt symbol. That's off. And then reverse. It's really, really good. Uh, it looks like everything's working. The last thing I'm going to check, I believe it's pin 13. And if you tie pin 13 to ground, um, the seatbelt symbol should go off. So um, I'm going to grab another DuPont connector. And I'm going to check that really quickly in the schematic just to make sure I don't blow anything up. That is correct. It is pin 13. Um, that is the inhibit line. So we're just going to take another little DuPont wire right here and plug it into pin 13. If I can get it there. And then we're just going, um, I don't know if this wire will stretch this far enough, but this is, uh, right here. This is my power and, uh, ground, um, little alligator clip thing. So, I'm just going to clip that um, to negative right here as well. And when we turn this over, we should see Well, that's not what we want to see. Sorry, we had a loose connection. Um, so that's what you want to see. The charge line is off. Sorry, I had a loose connection right over here. Um, as you can see when I'm not holding it. And then... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Loose alligator clips. When I undo this, we should get that back. Yep, perfect. So everything seems to be working. Um, that is an entirely new, entirely new chip. And uh, found the hex file, flashed it. This should save a lot of boards out there. Um, if you have one, um, I really not trying to compete with fixing these boards. I'm working on. A, entirely new um, bypass, um, which looks something like this and has a, a nice screen to go with it. Um, and these are nearing completion. However, I will say if you have a board out there um, that might save a cart or put a cart back on the road, um, let me know. Um, this is, again, I think I'm the first one to figure out how to extract the hex and, and flash it to a different, um, excuse me, a different chip. So anyway, um, if, if you're, um, if you're electronically minded and can do this, feel free. Hopefully it saves a cart. Um, if not, let me know, be happy to help. Um, and if you have a cart, that has no cluster. Uh, I sell cluster bypasses at forwardthink.org. And when the actual cluster replacements are ready, um, the thing that I just showed that's gonna have a color screen and 
GPS speedometer and some other stuff. Um, those will be at fordthink.org as well. So hopefully this helps someone out. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if this helped you, please like and subscribe. And uh, thanks again.